Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over tests or unit tests. Um, tests are basically a way to literally test your code. When you have some type of function, let's just say, or method, or what, or a class, or something like that, let's just say um, divider a, b, return a divided by b. Okay, so nice and simple function. You use this if ever, then that, now this is a super simple function, right? So if you ever had something complicated, you want to be able to test it and see, is it really doing what I think it's doing? And that makes it a whole lot easier just to basically get your code really super strong. The writing code is not that difficult, right? Of course, the better the code you write, the harder it is. But at the same time, when something goes wrong, that's really a problem. The best example I can say is that when you put together a big, huge Lego, all right, just this big, huge, monstrous Lego piece, and one piece breaks off. You can't just necessarily stick it back on, can you? You have to basically go back and how you put the thing together, and sometimes you have to take the whole thing apart, start from page one, and put the thing all back together again, because sometimes these things are that complicated. So tests are a way to isolate things and say, okay, what does this do? What does this do? Is it doing what I want it to do? All right, so let's go over that. Um, in pubspec.yaml, I'm going to say dependencies. I'm going to add a, I think it's called test. I'm just going to say any. And we'll save it. Pubget. I think that's the name of it. I'm hoping it is. And we'll go ahead and go back. Package. Dart. How do we make this a little bit better? We used typing instead of dynamic. If you don't put any type in front of it, that's dyna automatically dynamic, right? You want to statically type things as much as possible. So here, when you divide two numbers, it would be a bool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, double, double by definition. Here, I'm going to say an int a and here an int b, okay? This by itself makes a huge difference. It will catch, it will let the editor catch basically all of these typing errors, these, not typing as in, you know, typing on the keyboard, but the type errors themselves. And that's actually important. I once made this one, it was a pretty basic JavaScript web application, and it wasn't complicated, but it had a few equations and a few functions. And when you have weak typing as opposed to strong typing, it basically converts strings to numbers and back and forth. And I did not know what happened when. And so when there were problems, it took forever to track these things down. Using typing ahead of time really helps out a lot. And quite honestly, it would have saved a lot of hours just trying to track down some of these bugs. So something as simple as that can be very important. So whenever you can, whenever you can think about that, if you don't return anything, remember, put a void. If you do remember stuff, Remember to type it. Try not to use var if possible. Now, at the same time, if it's something really super simple like um, var a equals a divided, I'm sorry, um, var c equals a divided by b, and then return c. Now, okay, go ahead. Do have a nice time with that. That's not a real big problem. But when it gets more complicated than that, that that's what we have to keep in mind. Again, using the typing. Okay. Uh, let me clean this up a little bit. So the first thing that we can do other than that is basically an assert. I went through this in a previous video. I'm not sure if you saw it. Assert. Basically, assert goes like this. 
if something that's it if something in here is true or not it's a bool inside here so you would type a, some type of bool if it's the bool if it's true it will put an error if it's false no error okay let's see what it actually does so i'm going to say um int number equals thir two Assert. What are the things that we can assert? Well, assert can be uh, number equals two. Is that true? Let's run it. Uh, there is an unexpected token double. Okay, already it's helping me a little bit here. Um, there we go. All right. Um, okay, type int is not a subtype of bool, of boolean expression. Okay, um, another thing. Sometimes Dart is going to create these error things, and I have no idea what they mean. I, I really don't. So I will go in that in the in the near future. Okay, a search number equals. Okay, that's what that means. Okay, so <laughs> been out of programming for a while. So here we go. Let's try that again. Everything goes through. If, if it passes it, okay? So what if this says number equals one? That's false, correct? Number equals two, number equals one. It's false, therefore, it'll give you an error. Exception, um, for the record, um, asserts have actually, gives us more data than it used to. Before it used to give us a big, huge list of error type of messages. Now it actually says, Failed assertion, line 7, position 8, number equal one equals 1 is not true. So you can go back, line 7 right here, that is actually not true. So that's what assert does. Insert the, ass insert the asserts wherever you can. Where do I typically think that they would be good? I think that they would be good like before you return something. So it would be assert something right inside of here before you return it maybe do it in a class, but put them where you think, wait a minute, I'm not sure what this is going to actually be, okay? Um, we'll talk about that in just a little bit more. A couple more things. What if you want something a little more descriptive than this? Okay, many times you might want to do that. Oh, um, you could. what you could do is number equals one question mark, true, colon, throw the assertion in the main is a problem. All right. We'll do that. We'll run it and we'll see what happens. So it'll give us the assertion in the main is a problem. B, so what you could do, so what is this saying? It's an if statement, right? Number equals true. Is that true? If, question mark, is it true? If it is, then true. So the assertion, that's what it'll be, right? So if it's true, it'll just, the program will keep going on. Else, throw this one. So if it's untrue or false, it will throw this, and it'll run this down inside of here. So asserts, only a couple of things about them. I know I'm jumping around a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, asserts, basically, they are not part of the main code. They're only part of development code. So once you compile your program, it's going to leave it. So you could throw these in as much as possible. Now, you don't want to write too, too much, right? Because if it's every other line, that's number one hard because you have to write every other. You have to write twice as much, right? Because you're having to assert every other line. But number two, it does make it harder to read. So when you run it, it is, makes it a little harder to read because there's a lot of gunk inside of here. So in the beginning, when you're learning, just litter them, just throw them throughout there. As time goes by, you'll probably get a little bit more of a better handle in terms of where to put them and when, and we'll go over a little of that more in detail. But this is what I like to do many times is put it like this. So I, when you throw an error, it'll print where the problem actually is. You could say where the function is. Be nice and succinct about this. Be, be, be brief. Don't say some big huge poem or write some essay or something like that and don't create jokes here or anything like that most developers when they read this stuff they just want to get the facts all right so just write the facts specific enough that you know what the problem is and where the problem is but not so much detail in not too much detail because you're going to bore somebody on the other end okay 
So if I was going to, in this program, okay, if I was going to put in a cert, where would I do that? Well, if I can think about what problems I would have, I have a divider right here, okay? I'm going to return this. What type of problems can I have here? I could think of a couple. Number one, what if A and B are null values, right? You don't actually have to have values. What if they're null? If they're null, that may be a problem. So I'm going to say um, print divider A, B, and I'm going to say int A, B, right? So int A, B, we'll delete this. So these are, this is the correct type right here. So there's not going to be any type error here, but there's not going to be any value. So what is that going to run? I don't know what that is. Um, method not found, no such method. Again, this, again, this, it's, it's a sloppy mess. I, I, can you read that? Uh, I really, where is that? Where's the problem? I don't really know. Let's help it out. So what I would say is like right here, I would, might write assert a is not equal to null question mark true else throw divider method int a must not be null. Let's do that, okay? And let's do the same thing for B. I'm just gonna copy. I'm gonna change. And I'm gonna say B. And let's format this a little better. Um Oh, I like the formatting by the way. I didn't realize that. So if B is um, not equal to null then that's true. Otherwise, throw int b must not be. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this right now. Let's see what it says. Uh, okay, well, it says divider method int a must not be null. Oh, where's the divider method? Right here. Okay, that makes it nice and cleaner, right? So you know where the error, was, er, error is before. Couldn't really tell. This helps us out a lot, doesn't it? But you might not notice because you might not notice Oh, wait a minute, what, where's the problem? Maybe A and B loses their value because of some lexical scoping type of problem. So you might not have some value inside of here. And then you might make a mistake, might make a mistake and not realize what's going on. Okay. Oh, uh, obviously I made the mistake right here. So A equals 33. Int B. Okay. So let's run that too. And, um, oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. Int B must not be null. Okay. So there we go. Right? So it helps us along the way. And it finally runs it. Okay? That's the answer. Now, wait a minute. Is there any other private problem that can happen here? Well, anytime you divide, you can always divide by zero, right? So we're going to probably have to add an assert there, too. Okay, well, what if what if b is zero? Let's not jump to conclusions. Let's start running it and see what happens. Infinity. Okay, so return a divided by v, b equals infinity. I'm not sure, but you probably didn't want to actually have that value of infinity. You probably wanted an actual number, and that's more than likely going to be a mistake, right? Generally, in math, we call something divided by zero as undefined rather than infinity, but they chose to use infinity, and that's perfectly fine, as long as we know that. So what you probably didn't want that to happen, so you're probably going to want to say assert a um b is not equal to infinity no in, in equal to zero excuse me true else throw divider int b must not be zero. So we'll do that instead. And then when you run it, you get a big sloppy mess. Okay, we're, okay, there's obviously a problem here. 
um, true return b. I'm not understanding this. Oh, it's, it's, it probably just didn't go through. I didn't hit it correctly. So divider int b must not be 0. Oh, OK, th that can't be 0. That must be the problem right here, OK? So that's the way to use assert. Again, you don't have to do this. You could just say, delete this right here and say b is not equal to 0. And if you run it, it'll still give you a problem. Field assertion, line 13. It's right there. So that's that's perfectly fine to just do that. Again, if you want to have more detailed information, you can. It's optional, not completely necessary. Okay, so that's with the assert. Um, let me think if there was something else with this assert in and of itself. I, I think that's most of it. What else can you do with assert? Well, what you could do is, if you are not sure about something, you could put any bool that's inside of here. So you could say... Um, If you want to type it, say assert b a is the type int. You could do something like that. You can a is new a is uh, true. I'm not sure of any of these things. A is test. I'm not sure what that all is, but but that would be the type in and of itself, or any other statement um, about the characteristics of these variables, or again, methods, or classes, or anything else. So that's basically assert in a nutshell. Use it whenever you can in situations like this, just so that you don't run into problems in the future, and it's much as much easier to track down the problem. Okay, so let's keep moving on with tests.